Live from WRAL News Headquarters in Raleigh, your number one source for local news. WRAL News, coverage you can count on. I want to thank the American people for the extraordinary honor of being elected your 47th president and your 45th president. Yes, the nation's 45th president will be sworn in as the 47th president. We have comprehensive coverage of the results of Election Day 2024. Josh Stein will be the next governor of North Carolina, promising voters that every North Carolinian will have a shot at success. And if you've been outside, it's a really warm day. I'm going to show you how close we'll be to a record today and how much more warmth is headed our way. The voters have spoken. Donald Trump will return to the White House for a second term. Good afternoon to you. I'm Jeff Hogan. And I'm Renee Chu. Thanks for joining us. Just moments before our newscast, we learned that Vice President Kamala Harris is expected to concede during a speech at 4 p.m. Trump received 51 percent of the vote here in North Carolina, while Kamala Harris received just under 48 percent. Trump won here by more than he did in 2020 against Biden. WRL's Michelle McConaughey joins us now with the big picture of how voters delivered Trump the victory. Michelle. Yeah, there were seven very important swing states in this election, and North Carolina was one of those states that Trump won. You can see it highlighted in red there. His win in Wisconsin earlier this morning, that put him over the top. But he also took Pennsylvania and Georgia. There was record voter turnout in Georgia. And going back to these 2020 election results, I want to show you this on the map. Those are all states that President Joe Biden won in that election. But coming back to what we saw last night uh, here in North Carolina, played out in those other states as well. Harry won the urban areas, but the turnout of Democratic voters was not enough to offset the red parts of those states. We are still waiting for results from other battleground states, including Michigan, Arizona and Nevada. Trump is holding strong leads in all of those states right now. And if Trump does win in all of those states, this is what could happen. He could end up with as many as 312 electoral votes in a landslide victory over Harris. He could also become the first Republican to win the popular vote since George W. Bush back in 2004. Michelle, thanks. Nationally, election 2024 was good for Republicans. Not only does Donald Trump take back the White House, the GOP is also projected to take back control of the Senate. NBC's Jay Gray reports from the battleground state of Pennsylvania. Well, the campaign for former, now future President Donald Trump has shifted from a campaign to a transition as he is now president-elect Donald Trump. The 45th president will now be the 47th president in a win that had been uh, billed leading into Election Day as one that would be tightly contested, that these two campaigns were neck and neck going into Election Day, and, and that we may not know the results of this for several days. I, I think in any discussion now, the day after, we have to start with the idea and acknowledge that Many of those polls, many of the analysts, they missed it this time. They, they were just wrong. This was a dominant win uh, by uh, Donald Trump, uh, one that uh, saw him take most, if not all, of the uh, battleground states. You know, both campaigns had said uh, that there was no clear path to the White House without a win here in Pennsylvania. He, of course, won this state. He won Georgia, North Carolina as well. And when those three swing states were moved to the Trump side of the ledger in the early morning hours, that is when he came out at his victory rally in West Palm Beach, Florida, to talk with supporters. Every single day I will be fighting for you and with every breath in my body. I will not rest until we have delivered the strong, safe and prosperous America that our children deserve and that you deserve. So again, the president-elect Donald Trump, his uh, vice president-elect J.D. Vance now forming their transition team. We have not heard from Vice President Kamala Harris at this point. She was holding a rally at her alma mater, Howard University in Washington, did not speak to that crowd last night, but did say that she would address the nation along with President Biden at some point today, sometime this afternoon. Uh, her campaign saying that this will clearly be a difficult speech and one that they believe may be emotional as well. That's the latest from here in Philadelphia. I'm Jay Gray, NBC News.
In addition to learning that the Harris campaign will be, uh, Kamala Harris will be speaking later today, one thing I've also seen on the X social media platform is the topic, where is Kamala, is trending. So it sounds like later this afternoon we'll hear from her. But I do want to show you this video behind me here. This came into the newsroom within the past hour or so, but it was taken hours before. What you see here in this video are Trump supporters outside Trump Tower in New York City, and they are excited. They are waving around flags, wearing Make America Great Again shirts, and showing their support for the president-elect. We're watching um, other bits of video f coming from the feed as well as any other people who are speaking about uh, Kamala Harris in this race. Of course, we'll report the latest here in the WRL Live Center. We're also jumping around like that on Wall Street, it appears, as we take a look at stocks this noon. Record highs on the way for the S&P 500 at an all-time high right now as investors try to map out what a Donald Trump White House will look like for the markets. You can see the Dow Jones Industrial Average 1,358 points in positive territory. NASDAQ is up over 400 points right now. S&P 500 in that record territory, up 120 points this noon. Also, the price of Bitcoin, that began soaring early this morning as Donald Trump racked up wins in key swing states. Trump had been presenting himself as a pro-cryptocurrency candidate, and traders are also betting he would weaken regulation. Bitcoin surged to a new record, topping $75,000 at one point with a gain of more than 6%. Other cryptocurrencies also saw huge jumps overnight as the election results became more clear. Mo Green will be North Carolina's next public schools leader. The Democrat edged out Republican Michelle Morrow in the race for superintendent of public instruction now that all of the votes are reported. Morrow's campaign released a statement following her defeat that reads in part, this was never about winning a political office. This was always about the children. WRL's Destiny Patterson joins us live from the State Board of Education building in downtown Raleigh. And Destiny, Mo Green just spoke to reporters about his win. Renee, this is where Mo Green will be leading meetings and conducting business in his new role as state superintendent. Just in the last 30 minutes, he has spent his time talking to reporters about his win. And he says that he's very grateful to have taken on this role. He says that his main focus now that he is going to be taking over is academic achievement and ac academic excellence. He says that this will also help with improving the public perspective perception of public education. In talking to his supporters last night at the Democratic Watch Party, they cited his years of experience as one of the main reasons for backing him in this race. He was a superintendent as well as a district administrator. Green clinched the win by more than two percentage points. The work that I'll be doing will be on behalf of uh, the children who are in our public school system to be sure that uh, we move it to a place where it is seen as the very best school system in the entire country. Morrow's camp declined an interview this morning, but in a statement, Morrow said, quote, the election for superintendent may be over, but the need for safe schools and education excellence remains. Green will take over from Republican Catherine Truitt. And while he was talking to reporters today, he said that he wants to work closely with her in that transition of power. Destiny Patterson, WRL News, live in Raleigh. In the race for governor, Democrat Josh Stein was the clear winner over Republican Mark Robinson. WRL's Kelsey Coffey has reaction to the outcome from both candidates. Democrat Josh Stein will be moving in here at the governor's mansion in the next couple of months. Let's get you straight to a breakdown now of those results. Stein received nearly 55% of the vote, while Lieutenant Governor Mark Robinson earned about 40% of the vote. That's the same 15-point margin that was shown in our WREL News poll last week. Both candidates spoke to voters last night. The people of North Carolina resoundingly embraced a vision that's optimistic, forward-looking, and welcoming. A vision that's about creating opportunity for every North Carolinian. I'm a little disappointed. I'm disappointed for you because I wanted this so bad for you. I wanted this for the people of North Carolina, not for me. I wanted it for them. Robinson lost support in the final weeks leading up to the election. That was after a CNN report said he made lewd and racist comments on a porn site. 
He denies those allegations. Stein campaigned on promises to support public schools and reproductive rights. Stein is now making history as the first Jewish governor to be elected in the state of North Carolina. Kelsey Coffey, WRL News in Raleigh. Democrat Jeff Jackson will replace Stein as the state's next attorney general. Jackson beat Republican Dan Bishop in a tight race. Bishop called Jackson to concede shortly after 11 last night. Jackson said in his victory speech, it is an honor to serve North Carolina. Warm weather stays with us another day. We will see near record highs. Elizabeth Gardner is on the WRL weather patio with a look at how quickly it's warming up. Elizabeth. It feels nice right here in the shade, but I was out just in the full sun a little while ago and it does feel hot already. Take a live look at the gardens right now and everything is just beautiful out here right now. 81 degrees is our current temperature and we're looking at uh, temperatures across our area. Uh, 81 in Durham and Raleigh, 82 in Fayetteville, 77 in in South Hill and of course our temperature change is just a little bit warmer than yesterday anywhere from two to five degrees warmer this afternoon than what we saw yesterday hour by hour we're gonna hit that 82 degree mark by this afternoon and then temperatures will level off into the mid 60s overnight notice at around 9 or 10 we see some raindrops showing up there on our hour by hour forecast coming up I'm gonna talk a little bit more about the timeline for some showers that are in our forecast tonight and tomorrow that 82 is real close to a record high of 83 in Fayetteville, 86, and the previous record was 85. So kind of straddling those records there. Uh, we take a look at Rafael, likely to be Category 3 as it moves across the western tip of Cuba. But now it looks like it's just going to fizzle out in the Gulf of Mexico and potentially not even make landfall. We still, of course, have a chance for rain uh, both tonight and tomorrow and again on Monday. We'll take a closer look at that coming up. Meantime, next at noon, abortion rights. It was a ballot issue for several states. We'll tell you where it passed and failed. Also, Hurricane Rafael is expected to make landfall in Cuba today. How the U.S. is helping American diplomats and citizens get off the island. Plus, Raleigh has a new mayor-elect. The top issues facing the winner, Janet Cowell. Keep watching WRAL News over the air channel 34 and Spectrum channel 1257. Into the WRL newsroom within the past hour, we received a press release from Senator Natasha Marcus, a Democrat, essentially conceding the race for North Carolina Commissioner of Insurance. Again, that coming into the newsroom within the past hour. So that means that Republican Mike Causey will keep that position there. We're watching other letters of, uh, of concession that are coming through the newsroom right now, even looking to see when uh, Kamala Harris will be speaking later today. Stay with WRL as we stay on top of this story. Two years after the U.S. Supreme Court overturned Roe v. Wade, voters in 10 states cast ballots on whether or not to cement reproductive rights in their state constitutions. Measures protecting abortion access in Arizona, Colorado, New York, Maryland, Missouri, Montana, and Nevada passed. In Florida, Amendment 4 failed to reach 60 percent of the vote needed to enshrine protections in the state constitution. 57 percent of voters were in favor of the measure, but it was not enough. While Republicans flipped the U.S. Senate, two Democratic women elected to the Senate made history. Angela Alsobrooks will be the first black woman to represent Maryland in the U.S. Senate. She defeated Larry Hogan. Alsobrooks will take the seat vacated by a Democratic senator who is retiring. And now to Delaware, where Democratic Congresswoman Lisa Blunt Rochester ran for the U.S. Senate and won. The 62-year-old becomes the first black woman to represent Delaware in the U.S. Senate. The Republican Party took home wins across several North Carolina offices, starting with Commissioner of Agriculture. Longtime incumbent Steve Troxler will retain his position for the 20th year in a row. He got nearly 53 percent of the vote to over Democrat Sarah Tabor's 45 percent. Happening today, the State Board of Elections will randomly select polling places for auditing. This video you're seeing is from the random selection process in 2020. Two groups of ballots will be selected between precincts, early voting sites, or absentee by mail ballots per county. Then election vote workers will count the presidential contest by hand. They'll compare that with the totals collected from voting machines. This process is required by law. It is done to ensure reliability of those voting machines. 
North Carolina voters overwhelmingly chose to back a new change to the state constitution. The issue would reaffirm our state's existing rules that ban non-citizens from voting. People who are not citizens already can't vote, but lawmakers put this on the ballot anyways. Covering Wake County, voters approved a library bond referendum with 56% support. And that means there will be funding to build new libraries and expand others within Wake County. Hurricane Raphael is expected to make landfall today in western Cuba as potentially a Category 3 storm. The island has been struggling with blackouts while recovering from another hurricane two weeks ago that killed at least six people in the eastern part of the island. The U.S. State Department is issuing an advisory offering departure flights to non-essential staff and American citizens. Authorities issued an evacuation order for 37,000 people in far eastern Cuba. Elizabeth Gardner is out on the WRL weather patio right now. Elizabeth, you were just talking about this and saying it may fizzle in the Caribbean. Yes, and so it doesn't look like it's going to be a big deal for folks in the United States, but boy, it could be Category 3 as it moves across the western tip of Cuba, so uh, really rough for folks there. And we'll take a, a closer look at that coming up in just a little bit. Uh, look at the gardens. It looks beautiful out there, of course, this afternoon. You can see a few folks standing there uh, down by the little, uh, little terrace that we have. It is 81 degrees, and our dew point is 66, and so it definitely feels warm. It feels like uh, late September instead of uh, the middle of November, or almost the middle of November. 82 for our high today. We'll see a 60% chance of rain overnight tonight, a 50% chance for tomorrow. Our overnight lows are warm in the 60s all the way through until Friday. And we're a little cooler tomorrow with more cloud cover and a chance of showers on and off 77 degrees and then 76 on Friday. Friday's looking really nice with partly cloudy skies and those very pleasant temperatures. But here comes the rain. You can see some moisture that's down to the south. As a matter of fact, some of that kind of coming up from where we're seeing Raphael. But Raphael is likely to make a left turn. Um, and we're going to see that front moving in and kind of interacting with some moisture that's already streaming up through parts of Georgia and South Carolina. Or we may end up having some really heavy rain right there. And we're going to be on the north end of that where it just isn't going to be quite as heavy. Checking out future casts for the rest of the day today. We will see increasing clouds. It's beautiful out here right now and partly cloudy, but cloudier late this afternoon and this evening. And you can see by 9 o'clock some showers moving into the western part of our viewing area. By tomorrow morning, it looks like it fizzles a little bit. So earlier, uh, we did have the potential for some rain in the morning for the morning commute tomorrow. Keep checking back this evening with Kat and Mike, and it may be that the models are adding that back in, but it looks like it's out of here for actually much of the day with the potential for a little disturbance to come swinging through uh, right around the time of the evening commute with a chance of some showers if we take this particular run of the computer models literally. In terms of rainfall, the heaviest amounts are definitely down to the south from Augusta to Columbia. We're looking at uh, maybe three to five inches of rain, but here in North Carolina, the light green area is going to be about one hundredth of an inch and those darker green colors are going to be closer to half an inch. So from Raleigh southward, about a quarter to a half an inch just doesn't look like a whole lot of rain. We should have a real pretty sunrise for tomorrow. We'll have some cloud cover, maybe a few holes in the clouds, kind of like this. Kate Lundy snapped this one from Wendell. Beautiful, beautiful there. We love your Weather Watcher photos. Go to WRL.com, search Weather Watchers, and send us a few. Our normal high is 66 degrees. That 82, of course, is very close to the record of 83. And then after that, we do start to see our temperatures dropping some for the weekend. Our normal low is a chilly 43, and we're way above that. We actually haven't had our first freeze yet. And you look at these seven-day forecasts, uh, these seven-day lows, I mean, 55 to 65. So nowhere close to freezing. We'll have that chance for some showers tomorrow. And then another chance on Monday. I'll walk you through the timeline for that for Veterans Day coming up. Elizabeth, thank you. It's been six weeks since Helene altered the landscape and lives of those in the mountains of North Carolina. Today on WRL News at 4, meteorologist Chris Michaels shares a long awaited return to the classroom for students across western North Carolina. And broken printers, long wait times, and confusion over what times the polls closed. Tonight at 6, what went wrong in Wilson County on Election Day and how the State Board of Elections says the woman in charge should have corrected those errors sooner. Welcome back. 300 roads still need to be fixed in western North Carolina. NCDOT has made major progress since Helene rolled through the area, reopening more than 1,000 roads. Many of you may be wondering about that stretch of I-40 where North Carolina meets Tennessee. When is that going to reopen? A temporary fix could get it partially open by New Year's Day.
they will be installing a temporary bar safety barrier wall to separate the two lanes, and that will allow traffic to run at about 40 miles an hour in each direction. CDOT tells WREL the long-term plans are still in the early stages, but they have hired a project manager, designer, and contractor for that project. The race for North Carolina's Supreme Court is too close to call right now. Republican Jefferson Griffin and incumbent Democrat Allison Riggs are separated by fewer than 10,000 votes. That puts it within range for a recount. North Carolina's Secretary of State has gone to Democrat Elaine Marshall. Marshall secured just under 51 percent of the vote. Republican Chad Brown came in with just over 49 percent. We've been tracking more than 400 races locally and nationally for you. The most complete election results will be at your fingertips in the WRL News app. Scan the QR code on your screen to download the app right now. Make sure you check your settings and enable alerts so that you get notifications when key races are called. Today, parents have another chance to get information about Durham Public Schools' plan to restructure. This is focused on the district's Growing Together plan. Leaders say their main goals are equity, access, diversity, and managing growth in Durham. The district will be split into five regions. Each will have equal opportunity and a base school. An information session is happening tonight for the central region from 5.30 until 6.30 at Brogdon Middle School. Raleigh's mayor-elect is ready to get to work. We'll get a preview of the top issues facing Janet Cowell at today's city council meeting. And Donald Trump will make history as the 47th president of the United States. Next, his message to supporters. And here, have a look at your winning NC Education Lottery numbers on your screen right now. We're back in a moment. Shot in 4K ultra high definition, your number one source for local news. WRAL News, coverage you can count on. Janet Cowell will be the next mayor in Raleigh, taking over for Marianne Baldwin, who did not run for re-election. It was a crowded field with five candidates all trying to become the next mayor, but it was Cowell who came out on top with roughly 60% of the vote. WRL's Sean Gallagher was with her at a watch party last night. And Sean, now that the celebrations have ended, what is next for her? Yeah, well, city council is meeting here behind me within the next 30 minutes. This will be their first meeting since Cowell was named the mayor-elect. It's a group that Cowell herself last night mentioned as critical towards moving her uh, processes and uh, strategies forward as she becomes mayor. Among the biggest focuses for Cowell are affordable housing, and it's easy to see why when you see the median house price has jumped 42 percent in the last five years in Raleigh, with the median rent coming in at more than $1,500 a month. Cal told supporters last night the first thing she was going to do this morning was call city manager Marshall Adam David to get things going. Starting, you know, what do we need to do to keep building housing, doing it in a smart way, uh, leveraging existing infrastructure and making sure we do get affordable units out there. So by 2026, the city will have added more than 6,600 affordable housing units. That's beating its 10-year goal by about 16 percent. But this is something that Cowell said she wants to expand by helping the private sector build more housing and also using tax strategies to help subsidize more affordable housing ventures. Sean Gallagher, WRAL News in downtown Raleigh. A lot of business ahead. Former President Donald Trump won North Carolina in 2020 by just over 1 percent of the vote. This year, he won by three and a half percentage points. Michelle McConaughey and Will Dorn look into how Trump was able to expand his margin of victory by so much, Michelle. Yeah, Jeff, voter turnout was higher back in 2020 than this year, but Donald Trump was able to secure more votes, even in counties that typically run blue. Will Dorn is here now to explain why, Will. Yeah, Michelle, our lower turnout was largely due to Democrats not showing up. Trump approved his margins in these red counties you see on the map here, but also in the blue counties. He even closed the gap in 
Durham by a couple of thousand votes, and that is the most heavily Democratic county in the whole state. Um, in Wake County, uh, Harris got about 4,000 more votes than she did, than Biden did in 2020, but mm -hmm. Trump doubled that, uh, adding about 8,000 votes to his total. We saw similar trends in Charlotte, Fayetteville, Greensboro, all places that Democrats really need to win, but where Harris actually did worse than Biden did four years ago. And national media, they have reported that Trump made inroads among some minority communities, uh, especially black and Hispanic men. What do we know, know about that effect here in North Carolina? Yeah, that is a great question. We don't have the official data yet on voter turnout by race in North okay. Carolina, but we do have some clues. Um, and that includes that Trump won at least three different majority minority counties. Uh, we got Nash County uh, here in our coverage area near Rocky Mount. Uh, Trump won that. He also flipped Anson County uh, east of Charlotte, a place that Biden also won in 2020. And then Robinson County, maybe the most diverse county in the state, even the nation. About a third of the people there are white, a third black, a third Native American. Trump, you'll see, got 63% of the vote in that incredibly diverse wow. county down there in southeast North Carolina. So, uh, you know, people who voted for Biden last time, but Trump this year. Yeah, some big swings to the right in North Carolina and across the country. Thanks, Will. And for all of our post-election coverage, check out the NC Capital section of WRL.com. Donald Trump makes history becoming only the second person ever to win two non-consecutive terms as U.S. president. Many people have told me that God spared my life for a reason. Teacher of the Week was on a different career path in college when something happened along the way. <laughs> he discovered his career path that led him to the classroom. WRL's Ken Smith introduces us to a teacher who uses humor to connect with his students. Um, so each homeroom representative is going to be elected and represent your views. Benjamin McDonald yeah. says he uh, actually became a teacher by accident. What do you like about option five? He initially was an international business and Spanish major in college, but realized that course of study wasn't his calling. And with a little coaxing, he discovered education and hasn't looked back. I actually student taught here at Martin um, and in this classroom and have been teaching here in the same place for 17 years. McDonald is a social studies teacher at Martin Middle School in Raleigh. He's especially passionate about world history, making sure his students grasp the connection between history and how the world functions. They start to understand why the world is the way that it is, why systems work the way that they work. So just seeing that on a daily basis, basically, is my favorite part of the job. McDonald is a favorite among his students because of his sense of humor. Many of them find quite funny, which isn't easy among a tough middle school crowd, but he wouldn't have it any other way. Teaching to me is my investment in the world. It's me giving back. It's my investment in the next generation. Good morning, Mr. McDonald. Hello. You are WRL's Teacher of the Week. Congratulations. Hello. Give him a hand. <laughs> You're welcome. Ken Smith, WRL News. Oh, the surprise. If you'd like to nominate a teacher, you can go to WRL.com and enter Teacher of the Week in the search box. Donald Trump will return to the White House after winning key battleground states. Ahead, his promise for the second term. Also, to take a live look right now in Fayetteville. Some clouds hanging in there, but temperatures are warming up, and meteorologist Elizabeth Gardner will explain how long that will last ahead. And a live look as we welcome you back this noon, our tower cam looking at downtown Raleigh. We've got some critters up there that high, 300 feet up in the tower. It's 81 degrees in Raleigh, Durham and Fayetteville as you watch WRL News available on Spectrum and the WRL app on your TV or streaming device. Donald Trump has secured a historic second term in the White House. A crucial win in Wisconsin early this morning put him over the top of that magic number, 270 electoral votes he needed. Ivan Rodriguez reports from Mar-a-Lago, Florida. Please welcome President-elect 
Donald J. Trump. Former President Donald Trump now projected president-elect is the second person in U.S. history with two non-consecutive terms as commander-in-chief. It was a win he started celebrating early with supporters. America has given us an unprecedented and powerful mandate. And he'll have a Republican Senate with him after the GOP secured enough seats to take control of that chamber. <laughs> Vice President Kamala Harris watched the results come in with family, friends, and hundreds of supporters at her alma mater, Howard University. So you won't hear from the Vice President tonight? Her campaign co-chair telling the crowd late Tuesday the vice president is expected to speak publicly later today. A source close to the campaign told CNN just hours ago Harris's team is processing its strengths and weaknesses. President-elect Donald Trump giving his preview of a second term. I will govern by a simple motto, promises made, promises kept. We're going to keep our promises. Nothing will stop me from keeping my word to you, the people. Former Congresswoman Liz Cheney reacts to Kamala Harris's election defeat on X, writing in part, our nation's democratic system functioned last night and we have a new president elect. All Americans are bound, whether we like the outcome or not, to accept the result of our elections. Cheney had appealed to Republicans who were uneasy about a second Trump term. If it wasn't for all the uh, election talk here in November, you close your eyes, you'd think it's early September. We're going to get into the 80s again. Meteorologist Elizabeth Gardner in the WRO Severe Weather Center. I'm seeing more sunshine out there now, Elizabeth. We had a big cloud come over during my, my first weather hits, and uh, it's, it's just beautiful out here right now. We do have some big, puffy cumulus clouds, which typically we do see, you know, more for warm weather, you know, spring, summer, earlier fall. We take a live look at Fayetteville right now, and you can see those big, puffy clouds, as well as Apex, Raleigh, Chapel Hill, all seeing that. Chapel Hill, courtesy of Top of the Hill Restaurant. Uh, the next thing that we're going to see is some rain, and we have needed rain for a while. Uh, we are looking at abnormally dry conditions for most of the state, and tomorrow the drought monitor comes out. We'll take a closer look at that. And ironically, we'll actually have a little bit of rain tomorrow, but it'll just be a little bit. Around uh, half an inch to a quarter of an inch tonight into the day Thursday, scattered across North Carolina. We're going to see a cold front moving in from the west and some moisture that's sliding up from the uh, south as well. So we're going to be watching out for that. We take a look at Futurecast, and we're going to roll that through, and you can see we'll see an increase in our cloud cover late today during the evening and some showers in our forecast by around 9 or 10 o'clock. That tends to shift off to the south by the time we get to the morning commute and uh, it may be nice and dry for much of the day and then futurecast is showing another disturbance that may swing through and bring us some showers maybe around the evening commute uh, again but uh, we're not likely to see a whole lot of rain no matter what with the system about a 60 percent chance for uh, tonight and about a 50 percent chance for tomorrow 30 during the day uh, th 30 I should say for Thursday night checking that forecast rainfall again just not looking like very much our northern counties about a tenth of an inch and our southern counties about a half an inch so it's just it's not going to add up to a whole lot we do have another chance of some rain another front comes through uh, late sunday into early monday and of course there are veterans day uh, ceremonies that are happening and it may be a little bit wet this is lunchtime on sunday notice it's cloudy but we don't see the rain rolling in until much later likely after sunset um, into the overnight hours we'll see some rain on sunday and then after that it kind of lingers monday morning it looks fairly wet for us and then into the afternoon we we start to see some gradual clearing uh, by the time we get to the uh, late afternoon. Maybe another potential shower on Tuesday. Not all the models have that, however. We we'll take a look at Hurricane Raphael, and uh, it's a strong storm moving northwest at 14 miles per hour, getting ready to cross that western tip of Cuba, potentially as a Category 3 storm. So we'll likely see a lot of damage out of the storm, unfortunately. Uh, this is going to be happening overnight tonight. And then it's Category 2 there in the Gulf of Mexico, and then it just dies out there in the western gulf and it doesn't look like it's going to feed a whole lot of moisture inland most of the models are just going to park it right there and it's going to fizzle a few of those kind of have it you know shooting off in any different direction but just uh, not likely to see much happening out of that one there is another one that's sitting out there in the atlantic with a 20 to 30 percent chance of developing so we'll watch that one it will be a pleasant weekend after almost a record high today uh, upper 60s on saturday low 70s on sunday nice weather to get outside Elizabeth, thanks. There is no place like home, and Judy Garland's ruby red slippers will soon have a new one. How you can bid on a piece of Hollywood history.
And heading to break, here's a look at your winning Mega Millions numbers on your screen. Welcome back, a live look at RDU as we soar into the low 80s once again for a high. Such a beautiful day out there. As we wrap things up, here's a look at a few of the headlines we're following today. Raleigh City Council will meet for the first time since Janet Cowell was named mayor-elect last night. She took a big lead over the other candidates. She is already focused on stepping into her new role to make Raleigh a better city. Mo Green will be North Carolina's next public schools leader. The Democrat edged out Republican Michelle Morrow in the race now that all of the votes are reported. Today, Green talked about his win and his plan for public education. He said his main focus is academic achievement and excellence. Green will take over for Republican Catherine Truitt. Happening today, the State Board of Elections will randomly select polling places for auditing. This is video from the random selection process in 2020. Two groups of ballots will be selected between precincts, early voting sites, or absentee by mail ballots per county. Then election workers will count the presidential contest by hand. They'll compare that with the totals collected from the voting machines. Oftentimes, election season can leave people feeling stressed, anxious, and worried. Fortunately, there are many ways to cope with election emotions. Dr. Nicole Tarui says the first step to managing election emotions is to tune into your personal needs. Most importantly, be aware of early warning signs that you may be getting overwhelmed. Doctors also recommend focusing on forms of self-care to ease worries about the future. That can include deep breathing, practicing mindfulness, and maintaining a healthy routine. So just like 10 to 15 minutes per day, journaling about some of those worries and fears, and then being able to close that and put that away for the day and knowing you can return to that the next day. She also says to be mindful of the things you can control. The iconic shoes worn by Judy Garland in The Wizard of Oz are up for auction. They're one of four pairs surviving from the 1939 classic. The pair here gained notoriety in 2005 when they were stolen from the Judy Garland Museum in Minnesota. The FBI recovered them in 2018 following an investigation. The slippers are being sold as part of Heritage Auctions Hollywood Entertainment Signature Auction. Bidding has already surpassed a million dollars. Our pet of the day comes to us from Cat Angels NC. Friedrich is a sweet little guy with a penchant for cleanliness and cozy couch time. He's always ready to clean up after siblings at the food bowl, but when he's not busy, you can find him curling up next to you for a nap. His fluffy ears and tail are just waiting for some gentle pets. So if you're looking for a cuddly companion who values a tidy space, he might be the perfect match. To meet him, fill out an application on the Cat Angels website, and you can meet this little gentleman in person. Pretty regal. Majority of North Carolina voters cast their ballots for former President Donald Trump and Josh Stein. Today on WRL News at 4, the major role split tickets play in the election. We have gorgeous weather out there. It will be the warmest day of the week with highs in the low 80s. Once again, just a, a unusually warm November day. Yeah, it is a gift. We have some much needed rain though in the overnight mm -hmm. hours into tomorrow. So we'll look forward to that as well. NBC News Daily is next on WRL, your next local news update in 30 minutes. You can always get breaking news updates anytime with our WRL News app. Get out there and have a great day. Watching WRAL News over the air channel 34 and Spectrum channel 1257.